What's up, everybody? It's Dream or Nick or Sushi or whatever the fuck you know me as. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions from uh, my subs in the Discord asking, you know, like, hey, I have my seed checked. I have my frame. Like, how would you go about doing this, right? And so I decided that I'm going to update, post like an update video to, um, to my old uh, crawl guide, which is what I call it now, because uh, I call that the crawl method, uh, for basically updating it for all of the new information that's come out over the, the past couple of weeks since I made that video. Because I made that video basically right when, uh, right when we found out how the RNG of the dens worked. And so that was kind of just the blind check method that I now call the crawl method. And uh, it's something that we still use, or at least I still use in the method uh, today, but it's just, uh, it's just the ending phase now. So now there's a lot of other stuff that's been added to help us find our shiny dens, um, basically guaranteed with enough effort, right? Instead of like enough effort being randomly checking forever and hoping you get lucky, now it's we know where our shiny frame is. It's just enough effort to go skip to it and uh, do everything right and not go past it or fuck it up and save over it or something like that. So let's talk about everything from start to finish. The first thing that you need to do is you need to pick which den you want a shiny hunt, right? Which den do you want to host or which den do you want uh, a shiny from or your friends want shinies from, right? So you can go to the Cerebees page where uh, there's just every single spawn for every single game and where the physical location in game to get those dens is. Uh, the left column being uh, red beams and the right column being the purple beam for that specific den. And so the den that we decided to pick for this week is den 37 sword for me. So it's in the rolling fields and it's in the little back corner uh, where the little tree is right at the starting zone. We're doing the common version, so we're going to be looking for a red beam. And this is all of the stuff we can get out of this den. Since we have finished the game, we can only spawn three stars to five stars, right? So I can get little dragonfly all the way down to Como O. All of this stuff shiny if I was going to be hosting this den, right? So the first thing we do is get our den, right? And we know where it is in game. These are all the things that we can find inside of it, and this is what we want. Okay, so good. We have our den picked. We know where it is. So then we go in game and find it. So I'm in game here, and I'm already at it. So this is this is where the little uh, the little dragon den is for the rolling fields, right? little back corner and uh, I have already thrown a wishing piece into this den and made this red beam spawn if you come over here and it already has a red beam uh, that you did not spawn just like it was just randomly there you would go inside the raid and you would kill it to get rid of the red beam because you cannot do these kinds of hunts off of a random beam it has to be anchored by a wishing piece so you would clear the den and then throw your own wishing piece in to respawn the red beam because then it cannot move when you do the day skip so we have thrown our wishing piece in, and I've actually already gone through a couple seed checks on this den, just for the sake of saving time in this video, because that part can be lengthy, uh, depending on how rare the den uh, you're going for is, depending if you're going for hidden ability, depending if you're going for star shiny or square shiny, or if you're going for a specific ability in, in slot one or two, or specific IVs for the different Pokemon. Like I know a lot of people uh, have hunted uh, shiny zero speed IV uh, hone edge dens, right? That way they can make uh, they can make slow, perfect, competitive uh, Aegis Lashes, right? So same concept. We just walk up, we put a wishing piece in, and we spawn the den we want. If you're looking for a purple beam, you would do the method that's at the beginning of the old video, where you just keep closing your game every single time you see it's not purple, and you know keep going until you're purple. Or if you have a lot of wishing pieces from doing the day skip exploit and collecting watts, then you can just walk over to another den, drop a wishing piece in, come back to your den, drop a wishing piece in, and keep doing that until it's purple. Um, depending on how close the furthest away den is, uh, that could be faster than closing your game every single time. So we have our den picked, we are at the physical location, and we have thrown a wishing piece in. Now we need to get our seed. And so to get your seed, there is a bunch of different methods. Uh, Blaine's, another YouTuber, has covered basically every single one of these methods in some kind of detail. Uh, I'm not going to re-go over all of his videos because... He just does a better job of it. You guys can go watch his videos. I will link to, <clears throat> excuse me, I will link to uh, all of the methods uh, down below in the description, along with the page for the Max Raid Battle Dens list. Uh, and there is even a GitHub where you can go to 
uh, find like the physical location of the den if the picture isn't enough for you to find it if you're still confused. Um, so I'll have that linked in the description also. Now, the step, the next step, again, can be taken a variety of ways, like I just said. Uh, the way that I do it personally is I check my own seed using a CFW switch. I have two switches. I stream and I play on a stock switch, and I have another switch with uh, custom firmware on it that can uh, check my seed and uh, I can check my seed and give me um, my own RNG, right? So the method that I'm using is the one that is linked by uh, the Pokemon RNG Reddit, uh, like the original method of, of getting your Switch CFW'd and then basically just dumping your Pokemon using uh, Capture Sight. Um, the other method is Sniping Doodoo -doo Bot, which is a 4chan slash Pokemon board made website and bot that you try to trade and you just trade it, you trade it your Pokemon and it dumps back your seed for you uh, from your den, right? And then the other method is to completely um, no hacked switch, no sniping a bot with trades method, but it's a lot slower and it involves a lot of IV checking, a lot of power leveling the Pokemon, and a lot of effort. And so, you know, whichever of these three ways you want to take, um, that's up to you. Whichever way you have at your disposal. If you only have one switch and you um, and it's exploitable and you want to be able to get into that kind of stuff, uh, there's tons of videos on how to do that on the internet. Um, I'm not your best guy, I'm just some dude who followed those videos on the internet too. Uh, if it's your only switch and you really aren't in a financial situation where you could buy another one, I wouldn't recommend CFWing your switch. Um, obviously you could get banned from being online, you could brick your switch, all of these bad things. So, um, But again, just to reiterate, this is not you do not have to have a hacked switch to do seed check methods or to get your seed checked by somebody else. So this is still a, a method that's available to everybody, right? It's just a little bit more effort if you can't do it yourself or you don't have a friend with a hacked switch. So how I'm going to be getting my seed is I'm going to be hosting a raid on local with my custom firmware switch uh, joining me to do the battle. We're going to beat the battle. I'm going to catch the Pokemon on my custom firmware switch and then using my custom firmware switch I'm going to be able to dump uh, the Pokemon's PID, encryption constant, and its IVs so that I can easily check what my seed is. Let's just get straight to that and then have myself join it on local and here we are. Now I am saved right in front of this den. So on the switch that you guys are seeing on my main switch, my stock switch, right? I'm going to be uh, closing out of this den once we beat it. I am only here just to host it so that my other switch can catch it and check my seed. Okay, now that we have beaten the den, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a Pokeball at it on my custom firmware switch. And then I'm going to close out of my game on the switch that I am hosting the den on. I'm going to go back in game. So this is going to put us right back in front of the den as if we never had run the den, right? And then I am catching it on my other switch. Now, uh, full disclosure, I have already been working on this den. Uh, I've already gotten this seed, so I'm already quite a few resets, uh, I should say, into this den. And so I, what I did is, uh, originally, when I got my seed, here, I'm going to show it on screen. When I originally got my seed, it was right here. This was my original seed. And so you can see here that my first shiny frame, when I, when I put a wishing piece into this den and hosted it just like I just did, it was uh, about 2,000 away, and it was star and ability 2, kind of shiny, right? But I saw that we had a doable square shiny frame, and so this is the one that we went for. And so I've done uh, about a little bit over 5,000 resets, I want to say. I've done 15 years of resets, so however much that equals. So I should be a little bit less than 1,000 away from this uh, now with this new Pokemon that we just caught, our new little Dragonfly boy. So we are going to, all right, on my second switch, I just caught the Pokemon. Now I'm going into the software that lets me see its information called Capture Sight. 
And let's go over to it. Here it is. Okay. So this was my original seed, and we've done about 5,000 resets. I'm going to show you guys. I'm still going to keep doing the reset method that I was doing uh, for this first 5,000 for these next 1,000. So don't worry. You're not, you're not missing anything. Just missing me doing a bunch of work and getting a little bit closer so I can start recording the video. Uh, first things first, I'm going to open up Raid Finder, and I'm going to open up the Python script. It is used to find seeds if you only have the PID, um, EC, and IVs, which is what my capture site dumps for me. It does not dump the seed. So the encryption constant is B5323917. PID of the Pokemon is 8D05FC50. Its IVs are 27, 0, 31, 25, 31, 1. And there we go, it spit out a seed for us. We copy the seed, <coughs> excuse me, and we bring it over, we replace it here. Now this should be the exact same information. I should just be way further into this den. So this shiny frame should disappear. And this one, this square one, should be a lot closer. Now I'm already on the den, the rolling fields den. The beam is red, so it's normal. And species, just the highest species inside my den is a coma O. And we're looking for star or square shinies. Let's generate our new seed. And see, we have the exact same lineup that we had before. We just skipped a lot closer to our square shiny, we did in fact do a little bit over 5,000 resets. So now we are only a thousand away from a hidden ability, jolly natured square shiny den for our specific den, right? So we're gonna close out of this. <clears throat> now, our initial frame, as you can see here, is one, and our shiny frame is 1,018. So realistically, we need to jump forward. 1,017 times to be on 1,018. However, like I say in my first video, in the crawl video, we do not want to be on our shiny frame until we are locking in what we want. We want our shiny frame in our fourth slot, so that way we can roll it over and over again. So in reality, we're not trying to jump forward 1,017 times, we want three less than that. So we're gonna jump forward 1,014 times. Now what I like to do, so I go to our handy dandy date and time .com and I calculate how many days forward I have to be. Excuse me. Whew. Del Taco getting to me. Um, so here was our original seed, right? We were we were up pretty high. This is how many times forward I needed to skip forward originally. And we've gotten to the first of twenty thirty-five. And now we're going to be jumping forward. 1,014 days to put it into our fourth slot. So let's see what date that would be from where we currently are on our switch. All right, so we would be stopping on October 11th of 2037. So as you can see, that's a little bit further back than the original July answer that I had. And that just shows that in 5K resets, I fucked up enough to move the date back uh, like three whole months. So I fucked up three months of resets while doing 5k resets. So that's why I, that's why I went to go check my seat a second time right now. Because I knew that I definitely did not keep perfectly on track um, while doing all of those resets. So let's go ahead and put my CFW switch on the side and in sleep mode. And now we have a new target. We are trying to get to October of 2037 from our starting date where we're currently at of January 1st, 2035. So let's tab it back over to the game. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did to do those 5K resets in the first place, right? So we have our den here. Not home, there we go. We're going to teleport to the nearest Pokemon Center. The reason why we do not want to do resets in the wild area right now when we're doing lots of them is because the wild area is already very laggy and it is very easy for your game to crash while doing this method. 
So we're in a Pokemon Center to be safe from crashes, or at least safer from crashes, right? And then we're going to do the versus glitch that was discovered a couple weeks back, post me making my first guide. So to do the versus glitch, we connect to the internet, and then we go to versus, we go to battle stadium, ranked battles. Now, it's come to my attention that throwing ranked battles will eventually get you punished by Nintendo and make you not receive rewards for the ranked seasons and maybe not allow you to participate in online competitions. So if you care about stuff like that and don't want to have to remake your save, make sure that when you are doing this versus method, you are not going in and just forfeiting, but you're going in and you are losing or winning if you want to actually do the fight and like try to rank up. You're more than welcome to. It doesn't change anything. We just need to go into a ranked battle. I have a bunch of FOD shinies here that make up my team. I'm just going to enter them all, and we're going to go in, and we're going to do a fight, and we're going to let the fight continue on. Looks like this guy is actually trying, so he should whip our ass uh, pretty handily, <laughs> and we should be out of this pretty soon. So I'm just going to skip forward to when the battle ends without me forfeiting. And all right, the battle was finally over. <laughs> my, uh, my opponent thoroughly took their time to make sure... <laughs> That I, that I was, in fact, not trolling and kept buffing their Pokemon before deciding to end the battle. So now we're just going to spam B all the way until we get out of this menu. And our versus glitch is now enabled. Now, to do the versus glitch for time skips, we're just going to click Home. We're going to go down to our settings, time and date. And you can see that I'm here on January 1st, 2035, like we typed in. Also, make note of the fact that my time is at 1 p.m., Always do this method while in midday times for whatever whatever your local time is, because if you are doing it in the early morning, uh, you can get errors from doing it on days where there's daylight savings, and just just to avoid dealing with that, just always put your time and date in midday. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip forward one, and we're gonna click OK. Now this just advanced our game one frame. Without even going back in game, we just advanced to one frame. So if we go in here, and we change this to three and click OK, we just advanced two frames. So all you need to do is come in, advance the date forward, advancing the date backwards does not count as a frame, a frame skip. Only advancing the day forward does. So we advance the day forward again. Now we are three frames in the future. Now just to verify that our versus glitch is in fact af active, we go back in game and when we click on our game, when we're going back in, we should see a little visual glitch before it loads in. So we just saw that, that flash. That was the visual glitch to let us know that our versus method is indeed working. So now we're going to go back into time and date. And like we saw before on the browser, I'm going to move the date ahead forward over and over again, one by one, clicking OK every single time until my date is around October 11th. 2037, since I'm already at January 4th, 2035, right? Now, I see a lot of people that will do it just like this, how I'm showing you on screen. And, you know, this is fine and comfy if this is how you want to do it. However, this is very, very slow. So I'm having to do the joystick all the way left, wait for it, go all the way right, click up, over and over again. This is fairly slow. Now, what I do, personally, when I'm doing this method, is I undock my switch, I put it in handheld mode, and I do this exact thing using the touch screen. You can hover your finger right over the E in date, and it'll be also hovering right over the up sign on time and date, and have your other finger hovering over OK. So it's just tap with your left over time and date, tap with your left over the plus one to the day, and then click OK with your right hand. So it's just tap, 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 tap. It is way quicker than using your Joy-Cons. Obviously, I cannot show you guys this method in the video because I can't record my Switch while it's undocked. So I'm now going to undock my Switch, and I'm going to go forward to the year 2037 using this exact method. Now, one more thing I will say before I go is that because your game can crash while doing this frame skip method, where you're going day by day and just clicking OK and not going back in game, the reason why we're in the Pokemon Center is because it's one of the smallest rooms in the game, very easy to get to, very convenient, and lots of things not to load, like in the wild area, so its chances of crashing are low. However, just to make sure we're not wasting our time, every time I complete six months of skips, I tap back in-game, 
and I just quickly save my game. This doesn't interrupt anything, it just saves how much work you've done so far, right? So every January 1st I hit, and every July 1st I hit, I make sure to go back in game and save. It doesn't interrupt anything, it just makes sure that if your, game's, if your game does crash, when you reopen it, all of your work is saved up to the last January 1st or July 1st that you saved at, right? And so then you can just set your date back to that date when you're opening the game and you're back on track for your date calendar like you had never crashed in the first place. So it's very easy, very easy to keep track of. So I recommend doing that. Now I'm going to take the dock off, or I'm going to take my switch off my dock, and I'm going to do these skips, and then I'll be back later on in the video. All right, we're back. We have skipped forward all the way to... Let's see, where did we stop? We stopped a little bit before it. Okay, so... The date, our hard stop date, to put it in our fourth slot, should have been uh, 10, 11, 20, 37. So we stopped a little bit early at 10, 6, October 6th. And so let's go back in game. And now, this is where, this is where uh, the old crawl guide is used. So after doing... 6,400-ish skips like I just did, right? I don't want to risk having fucked that up, right? Not only do I really want this square shiny den, uh, but I don't want to do all that work again, right? So this is where the crawl method from the random check uh, guide that I made earlier uh, this month comes in handy. So that's what we're going to be doing from here on out. So we'll go back over. Oh, <laughs> now that we're back at our den... You can look inside here, and it is a como. -o. Now we are going to begin doing the method that uh, is in my guide video, step by step. So I'm going to show a little bit of footage of me doing it while looking for my shiny frame because my shiny frame should just be um, like five or six of these little reset checks ahead of me, right? So I should only have to do like four or five of these just to make sure in case I was off by one or two either way uh, while doing my uh, fast skips with the versus method, right? So we're going to save our game right in front of it and let us uh, do the slow check method. I'm going to link to the guide for the crawl video in the description uh, along with all the other stuff. So if you don't know how to do this method yet and you want it thoroughly explained, go watch that video. Um, I'm just going to fast forward the footage down here. And bam, we're going to open up on this one after doing the method, the crawl method, like five or six times. I can't remember how many, but it was pretty quick. We got through them really fast. And you can see here that I guarantee my fourth slot is indeed our Dragon Den, square, shiny. Um, only the Como O in this den can have hidden ability, so it's the only one that will. Everything else in here will have standard ability. And so now that I have it in the fourth slot, uh, I can roll any dragon that is a four, or I mean, sorry, a three to five star that's in this den that we saw at our spawns at the very start of this video into this shiny slot and host it online for other people to catch it. So I will be doing that this week on my stream. If you guys don't know, we've been streaming our shiny dens over at twitch.tv slash dreamt underscore of. We stream every night from 6 p.m. to midnight Pacific time. So come hang out. Lots of lots of shinies. We have a sub-only Discord uh, for our Twitch subs, where a bunch of our subs uh, talk and hang out and share their own shiny dens. And every single week we have Sub Love Night, where we go in and we do only offline um, offline raids, shiny raids with the community that's in there. So definitely check out the stream. Come say come say hi, hang out, try to get in while I'm on stream. They're all public, so you can just add my friend code up uh, when I'm streaming and try to get in the raid yourself. And uh, it's a ton of fun, so come check it out. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope it helped you out uh, knowing what to do. Um, I don't think I show it in this footage that I already have recorded that I'm like talking over right now. But um, the way that I would roll this, so say I, I would, obviously I could close my game here and then reopen it, do the jump forward three times. It, the, every single time, the four slots can be randomized, but it will always be shiny squares for this den now that I have it locked in. Using the crawl method is already saved in the correct place. All I have to do is close my game, jump forward three times, it'll always be there. I can host it online. 
if you want to keep hosting the same thing. Say, um, say Como-O comes up, right? Como-O is the rarest thing to spawn in the den. And so if I have multiple people that want to catch Como-O uh, all in a row, but I don't want to lock on Como-O because I still want to be able to roll everything else in the den for other people, we can do a trick uh, that I call the dream airplane trick because I was the first person in our group to find it. I don't know if uh, this was already knowledge in other groups, but basically what a host does is instead of closing the game, while hosting and like doing three skips forward and randomizing the mon again. If you want to stay on the same mon without having to save in front of it, without like purely locking it and still being able to roll the den if you want to, when you host a den at the places where you would leave, which is right when the first frame of the knees show, or after you Im everyone on the team inputs their first attack and it starts showing the animations for all of them, those are the normal quit out zones if you're hosting a, a shiny den for, for a group of people, so that when you disconnect, you become an AI, but they can continue without you. Right. Instead of quitting out of your game, you just airplane mode your switch. Uh, the equivalent of this, if you are docked, is to sleep your switch at those times. And then, obviously, unsleep it, come back in, and click OK, and all of that good stuff. So that's another little tech that we learned uh, on our stream. So come check us out. Come have fun. Good luck with your shiny hunts. I wish you guys all the best. Share those shiny dens with the community uh, around you. Uh, get more people involved. Uh, it's... It's only going to get bigger. The new DLC is going to give us more wild areas and more dens to hunt. So I'm super excited. You see me close my game here, and I can re-roll it. I'll see you guys.